Hello, my name is Hello. Sean, and today is an interview with Sean and Sarah, the writers of There She Goes. Rosie? No, come on, come on, come on. She loves the library. Was there a specific moment where you decided to write a show based around her having a child with a learning disability? Or was it something you wanted, you had wanted to do for ages? I would always post Facebook posts whenever Joey, uh, our daughter who sat in that room, uh, did something silly or funny or sad or I would put it on Facebook uh, and I built up a collection of these uh, until one day some of my friends started saying, you work in television, um, why don't you turn it into a sitcom? We wanted to portray not someone with learning disability, we wanted to portray a person because Jo is, is uh, so full of character and so full of her own personality. Um, um, yeah, we, we, we wanted to bring that, bring that through rather than you know, have, have her seen as someone with a learning disability. How did you guys feel when the first series had a such great reaction? And how did you feel when it got moved to BBC Two? Well, we were very, very uh, nervous when the first series went out. Um, the people that we cared absolutely fundamentally most about how they would see the show were people like yourselves, uh, people either with uh, some learning disability or the parents of someone or the siblings of someone. Um, that was the most important thing to us, absolutely. Um, and we had a, a charity screening uh, where we invited all the charities, including Menkap, uh, to come along. And the, re the response was so good. It was just so, it was a massive release and relief for us when, uh, when representatives from Menkap uh, were coming up to us afterwards and saying that we'd captured so much of their experiences and they recognised so much in the show. Mama. Did you just say mummy? You clever girl. Use your words again. Mama. What was it like watching such personal experiences and how Joey and Marley ever met? I had to leave set a couple of times because it got too emotional. Seeing Jess play Sarah in the early timeline when obviously she gets very emotional and she gets very upset was very, very uh, difficult to watch. Um, so I, I, I walked out because I wouldn't have been any help <laughs> in there. Uh, but uh, so yes, that and yes, Miley and Joe. Uh, Miley and Joe have met. I know from Miley and, and from her mum that that was, was helpful because they got to see the way that Joey interacts with the world and what she's interested in and what she isn't. And uh, she likes seeing Miley too. Um, and you can tell that she knows that this person is, is somebody that, that she likes. Why is it important to represent young people with a learning disability? We feel like it's really important that people realise that people like Joey aren't totally defined by their disability. You know that we're trying to show that she's, she's a person like anybody else. She's got likes and dislikes like everybody else and she's got a really strong personality. Yes, I'm talking about you. Um, she's, she's <laughs> um, and you know she brings a lot of joy to a lot of people um, and you know she actually can't tell her own story um, because she doesn't have the language to do it but we think that her story is is worth people knowing about um, and I, I hope that um, that people like it um, but we we do think it's important that all members of society you know have the chance to um, to feature on, you know, TV, radio, whatever, so that everybody understands each other. In society, well, it'd be great if just people started, didn't just saw the person. Not mm. the yeah, absolutely, absolutely agree so much with that. We don't see Joey as learning disabled because she's just Joey. She just, it's just who she is and it's just... Yeah. It's a part <sighs> of her, it's not what defines her. It's not her. She is made up of um, the same 
things that the rest of us are. She's made up of happiness and anger and love and mm -hmm. frustration and all these emotions. The fact that she can't talk, it just adds to her uniqueness, really. She's the hero of the piece, really. And, uh, you know, we're never laughing at Joe at all with if anything it's my character is the is the butt of most of as in life as in life most of the, the humor is at my expense so um yeah. so it's, it was just a sort of truthful reflection i think of how we how we have life with joe really sorry no rosie rosie that's disgusting not your baby sorry not your things not your things not your things rosie come on Whoa. i think that's one thing the show has done is have shown lots of families in 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 the same position as us that you know we're not alone and um these experiences aren't really so strange because lots of families uh in this country and around the world are going through uh similar sort of things and i think um i, I think that's one of the really good things that come out of this doing this for us anything else you want to say they love it really there you love it. Yeah. <laughs> Very kind. Well, if you think of any more questions, then just let us know, George, and we'll try and answer yeah, them well. for you. Yes, thank you. Nice talk to you. Thank you very much for chatting. It was uh, it was lots of fun, and uh, yeah. enjoy the rest of the day. Yeah. Nice to Thanks, be Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. I think you're both much better looking in real life. <laughs> <laughs> well, smoothie. <laughs> see you later. Right. Well, very nice to see you. Yeah. <laughs> see you, George. Bye -bye. Thanks, Rob. Bye. Bye.